Okay, so you're a designer and you keep hearing about this Python thing, right? Everyone's talking about it, but you're thinking coding. Isn't that like for software engineers? Well, it's true that Python is a programming language, but what's really interesting is how it's being used these days to, you know, enhance and even kind of redefine the design process. It's not about replacing designers, really. It's more like uh, giving you superpowers. Superpowers, huh? Okay, I'm intrigued. What kind of superpowers are we talking about here? Give me an example. Okay, so imagine this. You're working on a branding project, right? right. And you need to generate like hundreds of logo variations, just little tweaks to the layout, the font, maybe the color. Doing that manually would take, well, forever, right? Yeah, no kidding. So with Python, you can actually automate that entire process. Hold on, you're telling me I could write a little bit of code and Python would just like spit out hundreds of logo options for me. Exactly. And it's not just random variations either. You'd be the one setting the parameters. Yeah. You decide the rules you want those variations to follow. That's the beauty of um, what's called parametric design. Python makes it like incredibly accessible. So instead of getting bogged down in all that repetitive, tedious stuff, I could use that time to actually explore more creative options, test out different ideas. Precisely. And the time savings are huge. Yeah. I mean, one of the articles I read mentioned an architecture firm that used Python to automate their facade design process. And they went from spending weeks on manual variations to generating thousands of options in just a few hours. Okay, that's seriously impressive. But let's back up for a sec. We keep saying writing code. How much coding do you actually need to know to do this? Are we talking like full-on computer science degree level coding? Not at all. Actually, Python is known for being a really readable language. It's very beginner friendly. And the best part is you don't need to become a coding whiz overnight. You know, you can start with the basics and kind of gradually build up your skills as you go. So it's more about learning the specific Python commands that apply to design tasks rather than memorizing a whole coding dictionary, right? You got it. And there are tons of resources out there now specifically designed for designers who want to learn Python with tons of examples and tutorials geared towards real world design applications. OK, that makes me feel a lot better. I was picturing myself back in a college lecture hall trying to decipher algorithms. So you mentioned real world design applications. What are some other examples of how designers are actually using Python in their work right now? Well, one area where Python really shines is in something called generative design. Have you ever seen those, uh, I don't know how to describe it, those mesmerizing images or animations that seem almost organic, like they have this complexity that's almost lifelike. Yeah, like those algorithms that create those intricate patterns and forms. I always just assumed that was some next level coding magic. Well, it, it is kind of magical, but it's also totally achievable with Python. Generative design is basically about setting up rules and parameters and then letting the computer generate all these different variations based on those rules. It's kind of like you're collaborating with the software to explore all these design possibilities that you might not have you know, thought of on your own. So instead of me, the designer, sitting here manually creating each element, I'm creating the system that generates those elements. Exactly. You're basically defining the DNA of the design, and Python is helping you bring it to life. This is starting to sound less like coding and more like uh, designing with a superpower. That's a great way to put it. And the best part is, once you've written a Python script, you can reuse it over and over again. So if you're someone who's you know constantly creating similar types of designs, you can automate a lot of that repetitive work. Okay, I'll admit you've definitely piqued my interest. But before we go any further, can you give me a concrete example of how this generative design with Python thing actually works in like a real design project? Absolutely. Let's say you're an architect and you're designing a building facade. You could use Python to create a script that generates all these different facade patterns based on factors like, you know, sunlight, wind patterns, maybe even the surrounding urban environment. So it's like I'm not just designing one facade, right? Yeah. I'm designing a system that can generate like countless variations and each one is optimized for its own specific context. Exactly. And that's just, you know, scratching the surface. I read about a designer who actually used Python to create a generative typeface. And get this, it was inspired by the sounds of a city. So each letter form was shaped by data points, representing things like traffic noise, conversations, even like bird songs. Wow, that's wild. So we've gone from automating those tedious tasks to like generating entire typefaces based on city soundscapes and all of this is possible with Python. Yep, and the really cool thing is that this kind of creative exploration, it becomes so much more accessible with Python. You don't need to be a coding master to start experimenting with these tools and techniques. 
Okay, you've convinced me I need to add Learn Python to my to-do list, but where do I even begin? Are there certain software programs that are kind of, I don't know, more designer friendly when it comes to using Python? Absolutely. Actually, you might already be familiar with some of them. Remember we were talking about FreeCAD earlier? Yeah. Well, it's a fantastic open source 3D modeling software and it has Python built right in. Right. In fact, I think the article mentioned you can build entire 3D models from scratch in FreeCAD just using Python code, right? That's right. And because you're working directly with the code, you have so much control over every little detail of the model. You mm -hmm. can create really complex geometry, automate those repetitive modeling tasks. You can even build your own custom design tools. So it's like having this secret weapon within the software that lets you do all these things that would normally be impossible with the standard tools. Precisely. It's like instead of having this basic set of paintbrushes, you suddenly have access to an entire artist's studio. And FreeCAD is just one example. There are other programs out there too, like there's Dynamo, which is super popular with architects. It's great for creating these visual scripts. And then there's Grasshopper, which is kind of similar to Dynamo, but it works with a different 3D modeling software called Rhinoceros. And Python works with all of these. Yep. That's kind of the beauty of it. Python acts like this universal language, and it lets you unlock all the potential of these incredible design tools. You can write Python scripts to do pretty much anything automate tasks, generate those complex forms we were talking about. You can even analyze data. Honestly, the possibilities are kind of endless. You know, you just mentioned data analysis, and it made me think, we've talked a lot about how Python can be used for generative design, but it seems like it could also be a really powerful tool for more, I don't know, analytical design tasks too, right? Absolutely. I mean, oh. think about all the data involved in just your average design project. You've got spreadsheets, reports, maybe even sensor data from the physical environment, you name it. Python can help you wrangle all that data, you know, find patterns, and then extract these really meaningful insights that can actually inform your design decisions. So instead of just going with my gut or relying on intuition, I could use Python to actually analyze real-world data and make, like, smarter, more informed design choices. Exactly. For example, let's say you're designing a public park, right? Well, you could use Python to analyze pedestrian traffic patterns, noise levels, maybe even social media data to see how people are using similar spaces. That's really cool. It's like having a research assistant who can do all that data crunching for you and then give you the like the SparkNotes version. Exactly. And there's more. Python can also help streamline your workflow, you know, by automating all those tedious, time-consuming tasks that every designer hates. Remember all those late nights you've probably pulled resizing images one by one or creating like a zillion design variations. Uh, don't remind me. I think I'm getting a tension headache just thinking about it. Well, now imagine this. You could write this super simple Python script that resizes all your images to the exact dimensions you need in, like, seconds. Or a script that generates those design variations for you while you, you know, go grab a coffee. Okay, now you're just making me wish I had learned Python, like, years ago. <laughs> Seriously, though this is all starting to sound incredibly powerful, incredibly efficient. But I have to imagine there's a learning curve. What would you say to someone who's maybe feeling a bit intimidated by the whole, you know, adding coding to their already overflowing plate? Honestly, I'd say start small and don't be afraid to just mess around and experiment. You don't have to become a coding expert overnight, you know. So instead of, you know, freaking out about having to master this whole Python thing, it's more about finding these small, manageable ways to kind of like ease it into my existing workflow. Exactly. It's all about picking, you know, one thing, just one thing you wish you could automate. Yeah. Or maybe there's a design challenge you've been wanting to tackle with like a more data driven approach. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you just find like a beginner friendly Python tutorial or course online, something that aligns with that one goal. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, I guess, learning any new skill, right? You wouldn't start by trying to run a marathon. You'd start with like short runs and you gradually kind of build up your endurance. I like that. That's a great analogy. And there are so many good resources out there now. I mean, it's amazing. They make learning Python for design, like, surprisingly fun. Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed how quickly you can pick up the basics and actually start to see, like, real results in your work. Okay, I'm sold. You've convinced me. Time to give Python a try. But I have one last question before we wrap up. What's the one thing, the one most important thing, our listeners should do after listening to this, you know, this deep dive to really make the most of what they've learned. You know what? I'd say figure out your why. Like, what is the one thing you wish you could do faster or better? 
or even just differently in your design process, I think once you have that clear goal, that why, then finding the right Python resources won't feel so overwhelming. Because you'll be so focused on learning the exact skills you need to achieve that specific thing. Exactly. It's not about like, you know, becoming a coding guru. It's about empowering yourself as a designer. It's about working smarter, not harder. I could have said it better myself. And who yeah. knows, you might even find out you have this like hidden passion for coding you never knew about. Right. That's what we always say. The best way to learn is by doing. So to all our listeners out there, if you're ready to dive into this whole Python for design thing, don't be afraid to just go for it. Experiment. Mess around with it. Make mistakes. And most importantly, have fun. Who knows what amazing things you'll create, right? Well said. And I think it's important to remember, too, the design world. It's changing so fast these days. And Python is becoming, like, essential. Yeah. Especially for designers who really want to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, it's not even just about keeping up anymore. It's about, like, pushing the boundaries of what's even possible in design. And with Python, those possibilities, well, they're limitless. Thanks so much for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Python for designers. We hope you're feeling inspired to go out there and unlock your own design superpowers.